welcome everyone to the inauguration of RIT's 10th president, Dr. David C. Monson, Jr. Members of the procession are entering the Gordon Fieldhouse and Activity Center, led by the chair of Academic Senate, Dr. Christopher Collison. along with a representative of RIT's 125,000 alumni. student success. Next, entering the facility is the lifeblood of our university, RIT faculty. leadership, 
including our IT vice presidents and deans. Entering the Gordon Field House are esteemed members of RIT's Board of Trustees. Now entering the facility are the delegates representing other universities, colleges, learned societies, and scientific and cultural institutions. They will enter the Gordon Fieldhouse and Activity Center in the order of their founding year. Yale University, University of Pennsylvania, Princeton University, Dartmouth College, University of Pittsburgh, University of North Carolina, Hartwick College, Lycoming College, University of Michigan, Colgate University, University of Virginia, Indiana University, Hobart and William Smith Colleges, SUNY Fredonia, New York University, the College at Brockport, Alfred University, Boston University, University at Buffalo Delegate, University of Rochester, Washington University and St. Louis, Michigan State University, St. Lawrence University, St. Bonaventure University, SUNY Oswego, 
Cornell University, University of Kansas, Roberts Wesleyan College, Wells College, Purdue University, Syracuse University, Canisius College, SUNY Geneseo, Houghton College, SUNY Oneonta, Kuka College, Hood College, Adelphi University, Clarkson University, Northeastern University, Carnegie Mellon University, UCLA, Robert Morris University, Nazareth College, Sarah Lawrence College, Emory University, Siena College, University of California, Santa Barbara, Lemoyne College, Binghamton University, St. John Fisher College, Monroe Community College, Finger Lakes Community College, Olin College of Engineering, and finally, entering the Gordon Fieldhouse and Activity Center are members of the Platform Party, followed by Dr. David C. Munson, Jr. Good afternoon. I am Jeremy Hafner, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to this afternoon to the Gordon Field House and Activity Center 
as we celebrate this milestone event in RIT's history, the inauguration of our 10th president, Dr. David C. Munson, Jr. Before we begin, I invite us all to stand and join in the singing of the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home the home of the brave please be seated i'd like to thank the members of two of rit's outstanding performing arts student groups the brick city singers and RIT and TID's dangerous signs for leading us in the singing and signing of our national anthem. Let's give them a round of applause. I also wish to acknowledge Dr. Jonathan Kruger, professor in the College of Liberal Arts and the Brick City Brass Quintet for providing the prelude music and accompanying the procession, and the Gates Keystone Club police, pipes, and drums for leading the platform party. Please join me also in thanking our chief marshal for today's ceremony, Dr. Keith Jenkins, interim associate provost and vice president for diversity and inclusion and professor in the College of Liberal Arts, and our mace bearer, Dr. Christopher Collison, professor in the College of Science and chair of the Academic Senate. And of course, we appreciate the fact that this ceremony will be enriched by the presence and expertise of our professional sign language interpreters and real-time captionists. We thank them for their dedication to this important work. Now, we are honored to have with us in the audience many, many friends, colleagues, and special guests. As announced during the procession, we are so pleased to welcome the delegates from guest colleges and universities, RIT students, staff, faculty, and alumni, the RIT vice presidents and deans, and of course, members of the RIT Board of Trustees. Let's give them a round of applause as well. We welcome Nancy Munson, President Munson's wife. Nancy. We are so happy and we welcome you to the RIT family and we look forward to working with you as well as with Dave. We also welcome members of Dr. Munson's family, Dr. Munson's mother, Joyce, his children and grandchildren, Ryan Munson and his son, Josh, Mark and Megan Munson and their daughter Sophia, and Jamie Munson and Paige Rindle. Thank you all for joining us.
Dr. Munson's siblings, Gary and Beth Munson, Wendy and Michael Keegan, Mark Munson and his daughter Nandy and Jamie Munson, and Nancy's sister and brother-in-law, Linda and Dwayne Utech, are here as well. Welcome. And a very, very special welcome to Dr. Munson's uncle and aunt, Art and Jean Munson. Thank you for joining us. Dave is a popular guy and he has very many friends, so we give a warm welcome to the friends of Dave and Nancy Munson who are here today. Would all the friends of Dave and Nancy please stand and be recognized, friends and family. As most of you know, Dr. William Dessler was RIT's president for 10 years, retiring last June. We are honored to have him join us today, along with his wife, Dr. Rebecca Johnson. Bill and Rebecca, would you please stand and be recognized? There's more. RIT's seventh president, Dr. Richard Rose, and eighth president, Dr. Al Simone and his wife, Carolee, are also with us to celebrate Dr. Munson's inauguration. Please, all three of you, please stand and be recognized, and thank you for joining us today. We are honored to be joined today by several of our elected and appointed government officials and their representatives who are great, great friends and supporters of RIT. I invite them to stand as I call their names, and to the audience, please hold your applause until all have been introduced. New York State Senators Joe Robach and Patrick Gallivan. New York State Assembly Members Harry Bronson Mark John and Mark Johns. Representing City of Rochester, Mayor Lovely Warren is Alex Udelson, Chief of Staff. Monroe County Legislators Carla Boyce, Stephen Brew, and Tracy DeFlorio. Rochester City Council Member Elaine Spall. Henrietta Town Councilman Rick Page. Representing U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer, Chris Zeltman. Representing U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, Sarah Clark. Representing U.S. Congressman Tom Reed, Allison Hunt. Representing Governor Andrew Cuomo, Kaylee Benedict. Representing New York State Assembly Majority Leader Joe Morelli, Elma Borsillo. Representing our Monroe County Executive, Deputy County Ex Executive Thomas Stradonk. Also, our town supervisor, Jack Moore, was here earlier, and I would like to acknowledge him as well. Let's give a, a loud, a very rowdy applause for all our state representatives. We do indeed value and appreciate our partnership in this town that we call home, as well as the great support of all of our federal, state, and local government partners. Thank you again for joining us. Now, the largest group is our alumni, now numbering ne nearly 125,000. And we are extremely, they are extremely important to us, and we are grateful for their support. So I now ask all of the alumni of RIT here today to please stand and be acknowledged. All alumni. Members of our platform party will be introduced during the course of our celebration. Today is a historic moment in RIT's history and as we celebrate the inauguration of our 10th president. Dr. David C. Munson, Jr. follows a dynamic set, a dynamic set of leaders 
each of whom seems to have been the best person for RIT at that period of time. These presidents have made their enduring mark upon our university, and I am excited to see where Dr. Munson will take our university in his tenure. In terms of offering degrees, RIT is a relatively young university. While our founding date is 1829, it wasn't until the mid-1950s that RIT began conferring bachelor degrees, largely to part-time adult learners already employed in local business and industry. Today, we have this magnificent campus in the suburbs of Rochester offering advanced degrees and cutting-edge programs while enrolling students from every state in the nation and more than 100 countries around the world. We have five global campuses, and we are the home of the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. We are poised to continue our evolution into a world-class, student-centered, teaching and research university known around the world for its creativity and innovation. We could never have imagined the RIT we would become under the leadership of our recently retired president, Bill Dessler, who was able to build on the strong foundation put in place by his predecessors, Al Simone and Richard Rose. History has proven that the university had the right president at the right time, and I see history re again repeating itself. Under President Munson's leadership, we stand ready to chart a new chapter in RIT's journey, and we are ready to continue our amazing upward trajectory, as indicated by our recent ranking as a top 100 university in the nation by US News and World Report. It goes without saying that we are enthusiastic and excited about the possibilities ahead. Many of you think of RIT as a technical university comprised of engineers and computer scientists. And while we are that, RIT is also rich in the arts, as indicated by our programs in the arts and sciences, and an amazing array of clubs that provide our students the opportunity to express their many talents. We are happy to give you a small sample of the talent within our students in our first interlude of the day. I am pleased to introduce one of RIT's clubs, Waideko Rochester Taiko, a traditional Japanese drumming ensemble. Please enjoy. Hello all. Uh, thank you for having us here. Uh, this is a really great opportunity for our club and we all can't wait to see what Dr. Munson's gonna do for our college.
Thank you, members of IDECO. Wasn't that just great? That's one of many student clubs that I wish I could join. Maybe I can get one of those drums for my office. I think that would be nice. I now have the pleasure and honor of introducing today's keynote speaker, Dr. Philip Hanlon. I knew immediately that I would like him as he is a mathematician, just as I am. He also originally hails from New York State, from Governor New York, a small town between the Adirondack Mountains and the Thousand Islands of the St. Lawrence River, known as the Gateway to the St. Lawrence. Today, Dr. Hanlon is the president of Dartmouth College. He is a staunch supporter of undergraduate education, and even with the responsibilities of the presidency of an Ivy League university, he is a dedicated teacher-scholar as he continues to teach first-year calculus. He is a champion of academic excellence and has launched initiatives to build interdisciplinary strength around global challenges, expanded opportunities for experiential learning, and initiated programs to support cutting-edge research and creative endeavors. Dr. Hanlon holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Dartmouth and earned his PhD from the California Institute of Technology. And prior to becoming the 18th president of Dartmouth College, Dr. Hanlon was the provost, another reason to like him, and executive vice president for academic affairs at the University of Michigan. A longtime friend and colleague of Dr. Munson's, we are thrilled to welcome Dr. Philip J. Hanlon to help us celebrate this momentous occasion and to launch Dr. Munson's presidency here at RIT. Please join me in offering a very warm tiger welcome to Dr. Philip J. Hanlon, president of Dartmouth College. Thank you, Dr. Hafner, and good afternoon, everyone. It is such an honor, such a pleasure to join you today on this truly historic and celebratory occasion, the inauguration of Dave Munson as the 10th president of the Rochester Institute of Technology. I could not be more proud of my friend and former colleague than I am at this moment, and I couldn't be more thrilled for all of you at RIT. You have gained a remarkably talented and visionary leader to preside over what I know will be a truly extraordinary period in your institution's history. Dave and I, of course, got to know one another at the University of Michigan, where he served as Dean of the College of Engineering while I was provost. And I can tell you that among the 19 deans we had at Michigan, Dave was, in the words made famous by the incomparable Tina Turner, simply the best. And I say this not just because engineering thrived under Dave's leadership and was consistently ranked amongst the top five in the country, not just because Dave was universally loved and incredibly well respected by students, faculty, and alumni alike, not just because Dave is kind and compassionate, not to mention creative and thoughtful, and not just because he happens to be a bit of a math nerd like Jeremy and me. All those things are true, but in my mind, Dave was simply the best because I could always count on him to fill me in on the progress of the student solar car team. <laughs> Every year, he would give me a detailed download, delivered with infectious energy and enthusiasm sometimes with photos. He'd tell me how the team had taken theory to practice in order to make technical advancements in their vehicle. The challenges they faced working out supply chains and communications protocols along the race route. The efforts they made to raise the money necessary to build a new vehicle and participate in international competitions. And how they had done this all as a team. Yes, Dave just loved the solar car team. But I can tell you it's not because he savored the victories in international solar car races. Rather, Dave loved the solar car team because through it, 
he could see the future. He could see a team of talented young students being prepared for leadership and impact in the complex world that awaited them. You see, Dave thinks deeply about the world surrounding higher education and the daunting challenges and compelling opportunities that it presents. Questions like, how can analytics and other new technologies drive advanced manufacturing in this nation? How can we harness expertise in design and materials to help sustain the planet? How can games and the arts help us understand society and build stronger communities? Dave knows that the world's questions, like those, are complex and will not be solved within a single discipline or by a lone scholar. They will take equal parts critical thinking and creative inspiration. They will require teamwork and partnerships, not just within our campuses, but across the globe. Dave saw in the solar car team a vehicle to teach those lessons. Excuse the pun. In that same spirit, Dave will challenge RIT to further elevate its capacity to tackle the great issues of our time through the research and creative work that occurs on your campus and by honing a student experience that equips your graduates for impact in the years to come. He will help you realize your loftiest ambitions and overcome those sometimes artificial boundaries erected within academia that limit our ability to address such complex and wide-ranging questions. And so, at this moment of inauguration, I thought I'd look to Dave's past to make four predictions about your future. First, that Dave will break down barriers between disciplines, just as he did at Michigan when he launched the bio Biomedical Engineering Department, a pioneering department that sat between the schools of engineering and medicine. In so doing, he unlocked the potential for life-changing collaborations between engineers, scientists, and clinicians across those two schools. Second, that he will blur the lines between teaching, research, and practice through his unwavering support for undergraduate research, entrepreneurship, and experiential learning. Dave will take the already outstanding work in these areas happening at RIT, and he will propel it to new levels. Third, that he will invite the world to your campus as never before and deepen RIT's considerable role across the globe. One need look no further than the joint institute that he championed between Michigan Engineering and the Shanghai Zhao Tung University to understand his level of ambition and conviction in this regard. This joint institute literally stood up a new university in Shanghai, teaching the Michigan engineering curriculum to a mix of students from both universities. And finally, that they will seek to infuse the arts into every corner of your campus. In fact, if I know Dave, he is probably at this very minute basking in the fact, he may even be smirking, basking in the fact that the School for American Crafts found its permanent home at RIT and not at Dartmouth, where it was originally founded in the 1940s. <laughs> I have no idea how we let that happen, but clearly RIT is all the richer for it. I still remember reading Dave's own account of his very first visit to Michigan's North Campus, where both the engineering college and the arts schools are located. You've got to be kidding me, he said. Engineering and arts all in one place? Did someone design this just for me? I can only imagine his total state of euphoria upon arriving at RIT, where you've already done so much to elevate the arts. You see, Dave understands better than anyone that the arts, design, technology, engineering are kindred spirits, that these fields are 
at their core, creative enterprises. And together, they offer students a low barrier entry to the creative process, as you do with such impact at RIT's Magic Center. So four predictions with one thing in common. They are about connecting people, students, faculty, and alumni, and creating an environment for them to do their best work. For Dave, that's what it's all about, bringing people together and fueling their passions, and doing so with his signature good nature and a heavy dose of good humor. You know, people look up to Dave. because of his intellect, because of his compassion, because of his commitment to bringing out the best in those around him. And if there's one thought that I'd like to leave you with today, it's that under Dave's leadership, RIT will also stand tall, proud of its heritage and evolution as an institution, and more confident than ever in its direction for the future. Congratulations, Dave. And congratulations, RIT. Be thrilled you are on this journey together. May it bring you simply the best. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hanlon. We are thrilled that we are on this journey together. And we look forward to great happenings under Dr. Munson's leadership. And thank you for sharing your words with us. To help us learn more about Dr. Munson's leadership, I direct your attention to the screen where we'll watch a wonderful video. I mean, he's, he's a big man, for starters. I mean, he's, he's a big man, but, but he never really ever makes you feel that you are, you are here and he is here regardless of the title that he has. If you mention Dean Munson, everyone would get the smile on their face, be like, oh yeah, like Dean Munson's like the coolest guy. He's got a really strong sense of what's needed for a place to achieve that next level of, of achievement of greatness. I was really surprised at how one person can make an entire organization feel welcome. Well, Dave spent an outstanding decade as Dean of our School of Engineering, and he really took it from being a very good school to being an outstanding school. He understood where the college was at the time and where it needed to go next. So he had the vision to actually establish three different interdisciplinary programs. International experiences, entrepreneurship, and multidisciplinary design. You don't come up with that just by sitting in your office and, and reading email. You do that by getting out and learning the environment, but also being knowledgeable about what's out there. And then what he did was he empowered people to enact that vision. Building that really great team and giving them the freedom to uh, exercise and to implement that vision. He brainstorms, which means that the ideas are not just his. And it becomes a collaborative effort as opposed to something that's dictated. His vision is our vision, and so we're all rowing in the same direction accordingly. Dave is a real big picture person and I think very attracted to uh, collaborative interdisciplinary uh, enterprises on all different fronts. He really did think about the university as a whole and he thought about how the College of Engineering could play into the institution. He brought in other deans as collaborators to a degree we hadn't seen before. We really thought uh, that it would enhance not only the research but very importantly, the education. One of the reasons Dave got involved was, well, certainly his own love of the arts, but also I think he recognized a tremendous opportunity for his discipline. We like to see engineering as one of the schools of creativity at Michigan. It's next to art and design, it's next to music, theater, and dance, it's next to architecture and urban planning. That kind of integration of those units was something that when Michigan created this North Campus, that was sort of the dream, and no one had ever made it real. Dave made it real. Dave brought, along with all of his other attributes, a real sense of fun to, to our work. He takes the work very seriously, but he doesn't take himself too seriously, so there's a lot of laughter, a lot of joy, a lot of fun, but we get a lot of really good work done. Sometimes he's more formal and more official because he has to be, but He's still the same caring, compassionate person. He's a deep thinker, I must say. 
And, and that, I think, is something which I really, really, really grew to admire. He's just so completely student-focused, it's crazy. He wanted to work with the students and, and be an advocate for the students. Dave believes to the core in the academic values that he talks about, of educating future leaders. Helping them achieve their aspirations. That's, that's really, I think, what makes him a great educator. He has been one of the most instrumental and influential mentors that I've had, and, and I know that my journey to getting to where I am now would not have been possible without him. He also appreciates the incredible role alums do play. And it's beyond philanthropy, but it's about being a network. I think he views alums as being part of the family, if you will, of any higher educational institution. I always knew that, that some lucky institution was gonna end up with Dave Munson as president. President is a, is a terrific and perfect role for Dave. I, I think he's gonna be a phenomenal, phenomenal president. And I say that unreservedly. This is an all-in job, being a dean or being a university president. And Dave's wife, Nancy, will be a superb partner. Nancy's one of the most dynamic people, funniest people I think I've ever met. Yeah, Nancy's a hoot. She's a great compliment to Dave. She's also a people person, a lot of fun, a lot of energy. She just really makes you feel welcome. And she just has this contagious smile that you can't resist. She is such a, a giving soul loves to just connect with people and loves to connect with students and appreciates diversity. She is a really excellent partner uh, in all that Dave did as Dean and will similarly be a superb partner as he assumes his university presidency. A president uh, has to look uh, both inward and lead the inside of the university and then look outward, project the university's image to alumni, government leaders, people in the Rochester community, uh, and all of those Dave would be outstanding at. He always has some vision or some idea, and that combined with his ability to just listen and see what the students or the faculty and staff, what they want and what they need. Because every organization is different, and he'll adapt to what the fundamental features are of RIT that you all never want to change. But he'll also help lead you to a path that I think will bring a lot of success. His leadership, his presence will make him a superb university president. It is the coolest thing, and I say that from the perspective of for all the students, for all the faculty, for all the staff who are at RIT, they are, they are just going to be blown away by his, his charisma, his style, his, his size, his ideas, and his ability to transform his ideas into reality with people around him. I don't think RIT knows what they're in for. What a great, great story. Well, now to the reason why we are all here today. It is my pleasure to call forward Christine Whitman, Chair of the RIT Board of Trustees, who will lead the formal installation of Dr. Munson as RIT's 10th President. Ms. Whitman. Thank you, Jeremy. And Dr. Hanlon, I add my thanks to you for being with us today and adding so much to this important celebration. And I can tell you know Dave pretty well. Uh, we're gathered here today for the installation of David C. Munson, Jr. as the 10th president of the Rochester Institute of Technology. Dr. Munson, please join me at the podium. And with the vice chairs of the RIT Board of Trustees, Mr. Jeffrey Harris, Ms. Susan Holliday, and Mr. Donald Truesdale, please come to the podium. The one job we have as trustees, and all, I've got all my trustees, many of our trustees here today, is to select the president. So we are very, very happy today 
uh, that Dr. Munson is standing next to us. Dr. Munson, the RIT Board of Trustees has chosen you to lead the Rochester Institute of Technology, a remarkable institution with a proud heritage and a bright future. We are delighted that you have accepted our offer and look forward to working with you in the years ahead. As you assume the office of the presidency, you become one of 10 individuals throughout RIT's history who have given, we have been given the trust of this institution. As you undertake this trust, you can be assured of our continued enthusiastic support. As chair of RIT's Board of Trustees, I entrust you, Dr. David C. Munson, Jr., the Office of President of the Rochester Institute of Technology, and charge you to fulfill, to the best of your abilities, the duties of that office. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Rochester Institute of Technology, I am privileged hereby to install you, Dr. David C. Munson, Jr., as president of the Rochester Institute of Technology, with all the rights, privileges, and duties and responsibilities of this office. The vice chairs will now place upon you the presidential collar of authority, the symbol of this office, the placement of this collar, signifies your formal installation by the RIT Board of Trustees, I'm hoping this is okay, <laughs> uh, to this preeminent position of leadership. On behalf of all those present and so many who've sent their regards, I wish you a long and successful career in this special office which you now hold. Congratulations. Well, first, I want to thank all those actors in the film. <laughs> that was a little overwhelming. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, trustees Holliday, Harris, and Truesdale. And thank you very much, Provost Hafner. And a special thank you to President Hanlon. It is with great excitement and anticipation, and also a fair bit of humility, that I stand before you today as the 10th president of Rochester Institute of Technology. Let me begin by thanking the Board of Trustees for putting your faith in me and to the broader RIT family, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends. Nancy and I thank you too for your gracious welcome to campus and to the Rochester community. RIT has been rapidly ascending for many years under the forward-looking leadership and is now one of the top few universities in the nation working at the intersection of technology, the arts, and design. Let's please acknowledge RIT presidents Emeriti, Richard Rose, Al Simone, and Bill Dessler, and of course, spouses who are with us, Rebecca and Kara Lee. And to the former presidents, gentlemen, you have left an incredible legacy. I am grateful for the ideals you espoused, the momentum you generated, and the leadership you displayed in transforming RIT into a global university. I received my education from the University of Delaware and Princeton University, where I benefited from accomplished teachers and researchers. Most important of all was B.D. Liu, my PhD advisor, who is with us today. Thanks, B.D. Phenomenal faculty and staff colleagues have been with me every step of the way in my career, and I've also been fortunate to work with brilliant students. I'm indebted to both the University of Illinois and the University of Michigan for fostering my professional growth and many lifelong friendships, 
and I'm so pleased that so many of those friends are here with us today. President Hanlon, thank you for your kind words. I'm very much obliged for your support during our time together at Michigan, and I'm honored by your presence today. On behalf of RIT, we do indeed thank Dartmouth for giving up the School for American Crafts <laughs> so that we at RIT could watch it bloom for never, nearly 70 years on our campus. Phil, I do have to ask, have you got anything else for us? <laughs> And finally, I'd like to thank my family, my mother Joyce, who is here today. And uh, you've heard these names before, but I need to say them myself. Uh, Uncle Art and Aunt Jean, Brother Gary and Beth, Brother Mark and Nandi, Sister Wendy and Michael, Brother Jamie, my amazing wife and partner Nancy, her sister Linda and Dwayne, and uh, our son Ryan and Josh, son Mark and Megan and Sophie, and son Jamie and Paige. I am blessed to have an incredibly supportive family. I would like to begin my remarks by remembering Maya Angelou, poet, performer, and civil rights activist. She had this to say about one of my favorite topics. You can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. This notion came to mind yesterday as we participated in the Creativity and Innovation Symposium. I was beaming with pride as I watched our alumni panel comprising Christopher Edwards, a renowned 3D layout and animation artist at Disney, who is now the founder and CEO of The Third Floor, billed as the world's largest visualization company. And then Renato Liebrich, named Entrepreneur Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine's number one entrepreneur to be followed in this current year, 2017. He is widely recognized as a global serial entrepreneur, investor, and speaker on topics such as new technologies, social entrepreneurship, education, sustainability, and transportation. And then Patricia Moore. Patty was recognized by ID Magazine as one of the 40 most socially conscious designers in the world. She is an internationally renowned industrial designer, gerontologist, and author. And then finally, we had William Snyder as part of the panel. William is a four-time Pulitzer Prize winning photographer and best of all, he's right here. He's chair of our photojournalism program in RIT School of Photographic Arts and Sciences. These esteemed innovators all have made significant contributions to our world. Let's offer a round of applause to thank them for sharing their insights on the creative process. Creativity and innovation flourishes at modern-day RIT, but let me begin with some important history. RIT was born of an unlikely institutional marriage of an influential cultural association, the Rochester Athenaeum, founded in 1829, and a technical training school, the Mechanics Institute, founded later in 1885. The Athenaeum was essentially a learned society. It cultivated and promoted literature, science, and the arts by offering public lectures and debates and establishing a library. Lectures were held in a huge hall and included speakers such as Charles Dickens, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Oliver Wendell Holmes, and Frederick Douglass. The Mechanics Institute, similar to others around the nation and the world, was a school established to provide technical training for workers in industry. Applied fine arts were soon added to the Mechanics Institute's curriculum, and then in 1891, the Athenaeum and Mechanics Institute merged to become what would eventually become RIT. English was added to the curriculum in 1899, as the board of directors felt that technical professional instruction alone did not constitute a complete education. Board members noted, and I quote, the manual course, which should be strong, is weak inasmuch as it contains too much manual and too little mental work. Despite this enlightenment, the school that emerged was initially mostly a trade school, focused on teaching very practical skills that were needed in local industry. Fast forwarding to today, the world has changed mightily, and so have we. The path to major success in business and industry now relies much more than ever on creativity and innovation. This is a product of the digital age where change is rapid, information is instantly available, and nations and economies are globally interconnected. We live in one world, and across the planet, 
we share both problems and opportunities. Issues that come to mind are poverty, nuclear nonproliferation, global warming, sufficient clean water, renewable energy, and affordable health care. I note that although technology can help in solving these problems, much of the solution, maybe even most of the solution, will not be technical. In many cases, we already have the technology, or at least much of what we need. But we may not have the political and social answers, or the leadership, or the willpower. Of course, new technology often brings new challenges. Think about the future when it will be possible to have your genes edited to make a better you. In what cases will this be ethical? What might be the societal risks? How far should we go? And with progress in artificial intelligence and robotics, how long will it be before we humans are routinely interacting with machines in very complex tasks? Will these machines be partners? Will they be superior to us? Can they be programmed to have a conscience? How much should we let these machines do? Will we humans always be in control? What kind of education should our students receive in order to help answer some of these questions and thereby contribute to guiding the future of society? Clearly, we need strengths in science and technology, but we must be more than a modern-day mechanics institute. In my opinion, the world needs us to be more like the Athenaeum. As our predecessors rightly determined in the 19th century, an education must go beyond the purely, purely practical. An education that is too practical can be self-limiting. According to a World Economic Forum report released in January 2016, by year 2020, about a third of the employment skills that were considered important in 2016's workforce will have changed. And I note that the Forum's report does not call for enhanced skills in specialized areas, such as computer programming or design of automobile engines. In fact, it does not focus on most topics that we currently teach in STEM disciplines at universities throughout the world. Perhaps that's okay, because given the fast-changing nature of technology, such material often has an expiration date. Rather, the Forum's report says the top three skills for 2020 are, number one, complex problem solving, number two, critical thinking, and number three, creativity. The forum also highlights collaboration, emotional intelligence, judgment, service orientation, and cognitive flexibility. And these proficiencies do not have expiration dates. So how do we prepare generations X, Y, and Z for jobs that don't yet exist and to tackle challenges that have yet to be identified? Creativity is the skill that is climbing up the chart the fastest. With the rush of new technologies and new products and services, workers must become more creative if they want to be in the driver's seat. The forum recommends and RIT endorses that we must continue to rethink our educational systems so that we are building a broad, multidisciplinary skill set where creativity is exercised at every turn. What does this mean for a student here at RIT? I believe that our students should acquire many of the same high-level skills independent of the discipline they study, whether that be a STEM discipline, business, health sciences, or the liberal arts. As a starting point, each student should choose a discipline for which they have a passion. And then, no matter which discipline is selected, the student should learn about and gain experience in critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, innovation, collaboration, communication, and other high-level skills highlighted by organizations such as the WEF. This calls for experiential learning writ large, including co-op and summer jobs, international experiences, participation on project design teams, entrepreneurship, research, and participation in student groups and societies. And let's double down on making our campus a thriving ecosystem to stimulate creativity and innovation, which is the translation of an idea into a product, a service, or process that has economic or social value. In so doing, let's note that innovation and making can occur in every field, whether it be writing a poem or short story, choreographing a dance, composing a piece of music, 
advancing a new scientific hypothesis, developing a government policy, designing a new piece of technology, creating a social movement, or yes, launching a startup company. Every student can be involved in creating things that never before existed, and then putting those concepts into motion in an effort to improve the world. And while we're at it, let's embrace risk takers, just as the late Steve Jobs did when he stated, and I quote, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They push the human race forward. The ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. I am optimistic that we already are far down the right path. After all, what other university hosts a creativity festival that draws 30,000 attendees annually? And who else has a college like our National Technical Institute for the Deaf, offering cutting-edge experiences in the arts alongside STEM degree programs, serving more than 1,200 students who are deaf or hard of hearing? And think about some of RIT's first-of-a-kind academic programs and others that cross disciplinary boundaries. We're accustomed to trying new things here on our campus. It's part of our DNA. In the future, we will be placing increased emphasis on research and discovery, scholarly work, and artistic expression. But as we become more research-oriented, our students will be at the forefront. We will work together in our aspiration for RIT to become the most student-centered research university in the nation while we train the future leaders of society. Along with preparation for a career, our students will develop a broad skill set, an understanding of the larger world, and a passion for making a difference. We can take our lead from President Woodrow Wilson, who in 1913 stated, you are not here merely to make a living. You are here in order to enable the world to live more amply, with greater vision, with a finer spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world. Here is another reason for optimism. In a recent survey titled Making Way for Innovation, conducted by the Chronicle of Higher Education, university leaders noted that they are investing in new technologies and are committed to guiding their institutions through transformative times. And what is the bright spot among the survey's key findings that should energize all of us? Students are now seen as the prime drivers of innovation. This is in contrast with past surveys, where the leading agents of change on campus had been university presidents, politicians, faculty, and business leaders. Maybe we should follow our students. Of course, creativity and innovation are both best used for noble purposes. I recently asked an RIT trustee why she joined the Board of Trustees. This particular trustee, who is not an alumna of the university, said, I am so passionate about RIT because of the essential goodness of the people and the place. That really struck a chord with me. So what is goodness? Goodness is our National Technical Institute for the Deaf that not only provides educational programs, but also collaborates with researchers throughout the campus in the development of assistive and accessibility technologies for people with physical challenges. Goodness is serving students from lower socioeconomic status and watching them thrive as they break through that generational poverty cycle and lift their families. Goodness is a group of RIT students producing a social media campaign to help combat extremism and fight terrorism around the globe. Goodness is harnessing light via photonics devices to extend the lives of cancer survivors, to research how the human brain develops, and to determine if we on Earth are alone in the universe. Goodness is tackling complex sustainability issues, ranging from improved energy production and savings to developing smart cities to reducing food waste in an effort to help a planet whose population will grow from 7.6 billion to nearly 10 billion by year 2050. Goodness is establishing campuses overseas to create new educational opportunities for our students and to foster mutual understanding and, and cooperation among different na nations and cultures. Goodness is embracing diversity, equity, and inclusion. The RIT of the future will be powered by many uh, dimensions of diversity where the talents of all 
are valued and employed, and that too is goodness. Wouldn't Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass, longtime Rochesterians, be proud of where we are headed? Let me conclude my remarks by emphasizing that our university is truly unique in higher education with its core in technology, the arts, and design, and other important disciplines radiating out from that core. Maintaining our steep upward trajectory will be made possible by further leveraging this model and working across disciplines to help solve the most pressing issues of our time and by offering an education that is future-proof. I'm honored to be a part of the RIT family at the helm of this great global university that is changing the world. Let's get busy creating and innovating. Let's share our goodness with the world. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you for putting your trust in me. Go Tigers! Thank you, President Munson, for those inspiring words. I know I speak for the faculty, the staff, and the students that we are so anxious to get started and work with you for a bright new future for RIT. The chair beside me has a unique position in RIT's cauldron of traditions. It is the inaugural chair and Dr. Hanlon, you'll be interested to know, it was designed by RIT faculty, built by RIT faculty, who reside in the School of American Crafts <laughs> in the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. And it is called the inaugural chair. It is for our 10th president. President Munson, would you please take your seat in the inaugural chair for the remainder of this celebration? It is my pleasure to introduce our second interlude of the program, Sam Finston, a student in the B. Thomas Scalasano College of Computing and Information Sciences, is a member of another of our talented student groups, Mental Graffiti, a slam poetry and spoken word collaborative. Sam will now share a poem he wrote entitled, For a Walk. Sam? Thank you, it's really an honor being here. I'd like to thank everybody who put this um, together. This is the poem I wrote, as you've heard, it's called For a Walk, and I'll get started. Skip me like a stone, I want to bounce up and down as I soar away from home. I want to weave in and out of the familiar. I want to splash and sink down in the farthest reaches of the waters of Mindawaskan Park. Tell me that tomorrow is just sleep a shower and a shave away. I want to wake up with fresh feet, ready for a new trip down an unfamiliar street and discover familiar landmarks. I want to wonder who will be in the next car that honks as it passes me by. Put before me another blue jay. Let me feel blue in a good way. I want to walk out my door and be greeted by no other humidity than that of bird song and the color green, warm sun, cool breeze. I want to need no more and want no more than my cap and what's in my bag. Make the trip last forever and the destination unclear. I can't get lost anymore and I only get tired on the way back so I might as well keep trucking. I want to keep trucking until just maybe I find someone as lost as I am 
and only then will we retrace our steps and find our way home together. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I now invite representatives of our shared governance groups and alumni to offer congratulatory remarks. Representing our students is Fareed Barquette, President of Student Government. He will be followed by Kathleen Schreier Rutgers, Chair of Staff Council, Dr. Christopher Collison, Chair of the Academic Senate, and Eric Kukoff, President of the RIT Alumni Association. Fareed? Hello, everyone. Dr. Monson, on behalf of the RIT students, I want to say we are happy to have you as our president. We look forward to continuing the open dialogue we've had since you began your presidency and working on the issues important to our students. And as Dr. Monson always ends, go Tigers. Good afternoon. Dr. Munson, on behalf of staff council and RIT staff, we look forward to proactively and collaboratively working with you to make your vision a reality. This is an important moment in RIT history as we embark on this next chapter. As you navigate this new role, please know that Tigers always have each other's backs. Take that leap knowing RIT staff will be there to support you. Congratulations and best wishes. Good afternoon. Dr. Munson, we look forward to partnering with you to further your vision of RIT, becoming the university where technology, arts, and design converge to improve and shape our communities, the nation, and the world, and to continue to move our proud university forward. Dr. Munson, on behalf of the faculty, we enthusiastically welcome you to RIT. Congratulations. As president of the RIT Alumni Association, and on behalf of RIT's nearly 125,000 alumni found around the world, please accept our warm welcome and congratulations. Dr. Munson, we look forward to working with you to foster and strengthen the relationship between RIT, its alumni, and friends, to preserve and promote the university's traditions, purposes, growth, and the alumni, and to keep alive the Tiger spirit for our alma mater. Welcome. Fareed, Kathleen, Chris, and Eric, thank you. I think you all will agree that the inauguration events over the past two days have been simply outstanding. As you might imagine, they didn't just happen. Hundreds of faculty, staff, students, alumni, and administrators have worked tirelessly to make this inaugural celebration a great, great success. On behalf of our, Dr. Munson, and the Board of Trustees and all of us, please accept our thanks and gratitude. Members of the audience, please join me in a hearty expression of our appreciation for all those who made the inaugural celebration a wonderful event. And now I ask everyone to please stand and join vocal accent another of RIT's talented student a cappella groups, and dangerous signs as they lead us in the singing and signing of RIT's alma mater. The words can be found on the last page of your program. One, two, three, four, two. 
Hail our mighty together stand, creating good with mind and hand, inspired to learn till life is done, as teachers, learners, all are one. With pride in our diversity, a spirit As we close today's ceremony, I invite you all to join us at the reception following the recessional. The reception area is immediately behind the stage, and staff is on hand to direct you. We welcome Professor Al Biles from the B. Thomas Golisano College of Computing and Information Sciences, who will perform with GenJam, his genetic algorithm that learns to improvise jazz, and the software Sidemen in his virtual quintet. I promise you will not be disappointed. Our recessional will be accompanied by the Gates Keystone Club Police Pipes and Drums and the Brick City Brass Quintet and led by our mace bearer. The platform party will be followed by the visiting college dignitaries and the RIT procession. I ask that you please remain seated until the recessional has ended. And thank you very much for joining us for today's ceremony.